Hi everyone, my name is Marius and today I will be recording a couple of videos which will be covering zero touch provisioning of the branch gateway using Mobility Master 8.0, right? And we're going to be using Activate to do that. In video one, we will be basically doing an adding of the branch gateway to Activate. There's a couple of settings I'll show you. In video two, I'll basically add the branch gateway to Mobility Master and VPNC and the settings that's required there. In video three, we will actually connect the branch gateway, zero touch provision. It will first writerize it and then connect it to the internet. And if steps one and two were done properly, it should then basically self-deploy. Like I said before, the, the Mobility Master has already been set up. The VPNC has been set up. All right. What we've done now is I knew some information about this MAC addresses and IP addresses and so forth of the Mobility Master and VPNC. I also knew something about the branch gateway. I knew about the ABC MAC address. Right? And what I do is I try tie them all together in the Activate account. So if everything works well and I connect this device, we'll go to Activate and get information about these devices. So then it's important to also prepare those devices, the Mobility Master and VPNC, for the connectivity from the branch gateway. So what do we need to know about the Mobility Master? Well, what does the Mobility Master do? Effectively, the Mobility Master will send a final configuration. And that's what we have to work with at the moment. So the Mobility Master controls the configuration. Once again, if you know Mobility Master just a little bit, you'll know that they actually have a folder structure. And based on where you sit in that folder structure, you will get a specific configuration. And configuration changes, we can make them in the folder structure. So what's important to note is, where does this MAC address ABC fit into that folder structure. That's important to know that. Okay, so let's say at the moment I've got two folders, folder one and folder two. Inside folder one, there might be subfolders as well. I'm not going to go into that detail right now. And there would be, let's call this config one, and this could be config two. So what could be different between the two, these two configurations is they could might be exactly the same IP addresses, IP addressing and so forth. But for instance, in folder one, we want to basically deploy all our 7.005 devices. And in config two, we want to deploy all our 70, 10 devices. Why is this important? Because they have a different interface count. So what you want to try and do is keep the devices similar so that if you have a template type setup for configuration, it's easy for you to make decisions. You know, in one case, the last port here would be 003 and here it would be 009. So if you actually add a common template and you put 170.10 in here, you almost break that concept of the template. Right, so that might be it. So looking at that decision, for instance, this, let's say, is a 7005. And just by the way, it is. I would basically then put that into folder one. And whatever configuration I have set up in config one, plus the fact that it's a 7.005, will then give it a configuration when it's ready and push it down to the branch gateway. So that's the important thing. How do I add something to a folder? Well, effectively, there's two things I need to do. The first thing I need to do is I need to think of a name that I will put inside the folder. And the second thing I want to do is I want to put the MAC address associated with this name. So those things together will be put inside the folder. I'll show you that in configuration just now. Okay, the next thing that you need to do, at the moment, there is no connectivity between them and there won't be for some while. Right, the first thing you need to do is have secure connectivity to the VPNC. So the VPN concentrator, we've spoken that, uh, about that before, VPN concentrator uh, pretty much is a concentration of VPN tunnels. So what do we know about VPN tunnels? Well, there's some sort of security component to this. Okay, so if you look at the VPNC, and the way it sets up, there's normally one of two ways you can actually go and identify a device and secure the connection. One of that is going to be a pre-shared key. The other one is going to be a certificate. Right, now with a pre-shared key, if you did use pre-shared key, it means that you would basically set up a pre-shared key and a common pre-shared key on the other device, which would be the branch gateway, for instance. But since we don't want to go and connect to the branch gateway, to put in a pre-shared key, all right, because this is zero-touch provisioning, that almost, I want to say, you can't use. 
in zero touch provisioning. On the certificate side, you have a public certificate, right, and a factory certificate. So you could have something like a CA authority, right? And if you use CA authority, right, um, what you would want to do in that case is you would have to go and create an actual certificate. When this device starts up, it will basically have some certification created. But once again, that's not zero touch provisioning. You don't want to put a certificate in here. Okay, so what we do have uh, available to us with this configuration is something called factory. Inside the factory certificate, it's basically a built-in certificate, a trusted certificate already built into this device. There's another one already built into the VPNC. So in theory, only a branch gateway from Aruba can connect to a VPNC from Aruba because of the certification if we use factory. But the good thing about that is the fact that it's already built in, I don't have to do any configuration. So there you can see how we're going to lean towards when we talk about security, we're going to do a certificate because pre-shared key is not zero touch and we're going to go to the factory certificate. So we don't have to configure anything. Okay, so that's the first thing that needs to happen. Well, I've got to base all of these decisions once again on some sort of identification and that's going to be the MAC address. So the MAC address is really important right now. It basically ties all of these little ends together. Good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually step over to the configuration and show you how that works. Brilliant. So if we go and look at the site. Okay, as you can see, we've now logged in. Uh, this is a Mobility Master that I'm using at the moment. And it's running version 8.1.0.1 right now. But more importantly is, you can see my folder structure over here. If I collapse my folder structure, all my managed devices, right, will basically sit in this managed, device, uh, managed network folder. So whatever I configure on the managed network folder, if I go to configuration here, and I would configure something in here, um, that would apply to any single device that's a, in a managed device, right, in those folders. So I could basically set up some things inside the actual folder itself. But right now, I don't want to specifically just do all of it, because I normally split this into two folders as well. You have a managed device branch, and you also have managed device VPNCs. They might have different configurations. Okay, so from a VPNC point of view, as you can see, I've got two devices right now on my managed device. So that's the one side of the configuration. If you remember the whiteboard session, that's going to be the security component. And this is going to be the configuration component that we'll set up. So inside this, I've got multiple folders once again. As you can see, I have some for consulting systems engineers, some for people that people that, as an overlay team that works in MIA. I've got people working in basically uh, the Netherlands Customer Experience Center. And we've got some Etsy's as well that we have around as well. So this changes and jobs all the time, depending on who's connected to the infrastructure. And as you can see, there's different people connected right now. But I want to focus at the moment. Remember, if you configure anything on MD branch, it applies to all these folders. So I move down once again, and I say I'm going to change something in EMEA. So I want to add this device in here. As you can see, it's already been added, but I'm going to just show you how we could do that. So you would say add, and you could create a subgroup here. But anyway, for now, I'm going to just give it a name and let's call it test one for this testing environment. OK, MAC address, I'm not going to put in the entire MAC address here, but um, you would put in the MAC address over here and you'd specify what type of device this would be. Right. So right now, that's a 7005. I'm just going to cancel it out. It's already been created. I don't have to create it again. But you'd then say submit and then basically uh, do the pending changes. Good. So I'm just going to cancel that one out. That's the one side of it. So if I've created inside this folder, whatever configuration that's already been set up, it will inherit that configuration. And you'll see that name appear over here as we set it up. All right. The next thing that needs to happen is, like I said, is I need to go to the VPNC. 
So on edge one, two, I've got two edges right now, VPNCs. I'll just show you in one, how you basically add that device. So looking at the edge one at the moment, um, we want to look at controllers. And in controllers, there's two segments to the configuration. The top segment, as you can see from this controller acting as a VPNC, all right? This above is all to do with the actual uh, mobility master configuration. As you can see, it points to mobility master. It's got a MAC addressing in there, of course, and it's got a pre-shared key. It uses pre-shared keys between those two and not the certification. Good. So let me just cancel that. Otherwise, I'm going to mess things up a little bit. Okay. So if you look at this, I also have VPN concentration, uh, concentrative peers. Right. So these are all the peers, the expected controllers I'm going to see, the branch gateways. And um, this is going to change in future, I understand. There will be a, a more uh, fluent way of doing this. Uh, but for now, what you do is you just say add. The most important thing about this is uh, you need a MAC address and a way of securing. So MAC address, you'd say AABBCC, whatever the case may be. And you've got the option of pre-shared key or certificate. If you choose certificate, like I said, if you use pre-shared key, you've got to configure this pre-shared key on the branch gateway as well, which we don't want to do. It's zero touch. So from a certification point of view, as I said, there's two types of certificate. You've got a custom certificate and a factory certificate. For now, uh, I'm going to use a factory certificate, just as this example, and you basically add this to the device. I'm not going to add it now because I've already added my MAC address before. So you would do that twice because you've got two edges. And once you've configured those and you make sure that they are available in both of these devices, um, the setup should be done from a configuration point of view. Of course, there's a lot of configuration that you have done in the background and that I'm not alluding to at all at the moment, which would have been inside the managed branch infrastructure. Good, and that takes me basically to my final screen. If you uh, like the videos, please let us know, like the videos. Uh, if you have any comments about the videos, please comment on the videos or maybe make some suggestions on new videos we need to make or maybe on these videos or things we can do better. And yeah, please don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel if you want to see the last video in this series. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and we'll talk to you soon.